Welcome once again to the Faith Fellowship Baptist Church devotional series. We're only going to be doing these three a week now. We're entering into a season where it's summer, so it's just a little more relaxed. And also, uh, we're going to be having our services here at our church again. And so uh, we have that opportunity to meet face to face. And that's just going to keep us a little more busy, making sure that's all ready the first couple weeks. So uh, today is Wednesday. We'll have another one up on Friday. And then next week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we'll start following that pattern, at least for the next little while, and uh, see how that goes. Today we're in Psalm 42. So if you have your Bibles, please turn to Psalm 42. Follow along with me uh, as I read. Psalm 42 for the director of music, a mascal of the sons of Korah. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet my, with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, from the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, Where is your God? Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. So this is a psalm that, as we go through the psalm, sometimes if I read a lot in a row, they start to blend together a little bit. There's some similar themes, but every now and then a psalm just kind of pops and this is one of those ones for me that, that as I read this, there's just so much emotion and so much rich language used by David. It's clear, or by the sons of Korah, I should say, it's clear that the author of this psalm uh, was just going through such an intense uh, emotional time with his walk with the Lord. And, and it kind of stands out in a lot of ways. There's some richness to this psalm. And so in the midst of this depression or despair or anguish of soul, uh, the author actively decides to tell his soul to hope in God. And that's ultimately where this psalm is going. Uh, there are tormentors or adversaries who are taunting the author by saying, where is your God? They repeat that, right? Verse 3 and verse 10. Um, and he gives an answer that we'll come to at the end. But with that, uh, where is your God? There's clearly the emotion that's there where the author is maybe believing it a little bit. He's wondering himself where God is uh, in his depression, in his despair. And I don't know if you've gone through a time, or maybe you are going through a time, where there are adversaries that seem to be saying to your soul that God is, is far away, that he's not with you, that he's abandoned you. And it can feel that way sometimes in our life. But what's profound is that the author of this psalm recognizes and acknowledges the feeling in his life. Uh, he says so in verse 9. Uh, I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning oppressed by my enemy? And yet, he appeals to the facts about God in order to overcome the feelings of abandonment. Verses 4 and 6, he, he says the phrase, I remember. Verse 4, remember my soul, the time that you used to have with the Lord. And if there's ever a verse that maybe summed up COVID-19, uh, verse 4 of the psalm, these things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude leading the procession to the house of God with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. We used to do that, and now we get to do it again. We're excited. Um, he tells his soul to remember that, the joy that he used to have walking with the Lord. And he tells his soul to remember in verse 6 the things that God has done, and he lists some locations that are obviously meaningful to this author. Verse 7 he comes to and he, he reminds himself that God is in control over the waterfalls, over the breakers, and over the waves that have come into his life. Uh, he says that they are your waterfalls, they are your waves and breakers that have swept over me. 
as he prays to God. So he's reminding himself God is in control even over the trials. Verse 8, he then says God, he reminds himself that God uh, commands his steadfast love or directs his love uh, and gives him a song as well and a prayer in his heart. And then verses 5 and 11, those do serve as the answer to the question, uh, where is your God? And he doesn't answer by giving a, a place or by answering directly, but he answers by telling his soul, hope in God, for I shall again praise him. And this is kind of a, a, a threefold uh, verse for us. It's an answer to the question, where is your God? He's saying, God is my hope, and he is there, and he is going to be the one who I praise. It's a prediction that this too shall pass, that the season that he's in is, is merely that, it's a season, uh, that it won't, uh, it, it shall fade in the end and the seasons of life, they shift and ultimately our life passes and, and we get to be with the Lord. And so this hope in God for I shall again praise him, it's a prediction of what's going to happen. And it's also a declaration again to his soul. He's, he's using the fact that I can hope in God and I will again praise him to encourage himself to get through this trying time in his life. And so I pray that you and I can do as this author did, as this psalm suggests, when we go through times of hardship, depression, suffering, anguish of soul, that we will remember what God has done in our life. We'll look back at that. We'll remind ourselves that God's in control over everything that happens in our life. And then we'll declare to our souls and to those around us that we shall again praise him.